how are you? Nice to meet you. Have you already heard about me? Don't believe what they said. No, um, believe everything they said, it's all true. <laughs> Anyway, I'm so excited to be with you. Yes, I go by Tanglewood Sue uh, as an accident of Facebook, trying to switch the name on my business, Tanglewood Works, and my name Sue. I ended up as Tanglewood Sue, and it kind of stuck, and I'm rolling with it. So a little bit about me. I'm right here in uh, the D.C. area. I'm actually in Maryland, but I'm right on the D.C. border. I have a studio. I'll give you a little bit of a tour. Um, and I have recently moved my brick-and-mortar shop into my studio, which is making me so happy because I don't have to drive anywhere or stop to go from creating to selling. It's all right here in one place and there's parking. So, um, but there's no AC. Woo! So you're gonna see me get sweaty, sweaty in here. Um, so that's who I am. And I love selling paint and supplies and basically anything anybody's gonna need to upcycle, to learn to paint furniture or to upcycle anything else they have. I don't limit myself to furniture. I upcycle canvases, art, jewelry, pieces of wood, um, you name it, I've done it. And sometimes I take all those skills that I've learned and I apply them in different ways. I combine mediums and products. So I taught myself how to use alcohol links. And then I did what they said and used it on glass and impervious surfaces. And then inevitably I will break all the rules. So I learn the rules and then I break the rules. Uh, that's me. I think I'm not alone in that. Uh, so when I learned how to use it, I learned uh, what rules there were I could break. And I ended up using things like alcohol ink on pervious surfaces, on canvases, in my artwork. Um, so I do the same thing with paint. I, I never read the directions. <laughs> don't trust me on anything. I just like to dig in, start working with it, see how I can play with it, see if it's more um, creamy, if it's more chalky, if it's more oily, just play with it. Uh, then I go and I see what you're supposed to do with it. All right, that, that's, that's how I do it. And then I do whatever the heck I want and I throw all that out. But I do like to know the rules so that I can break them. There you go. So today what I wanna do is kinda of show you my process and how I am bringing in the neon paints uh, in hopefully a unique and fun way. Uh, I always like to push the limits and I love different color stories. And I have been playing with the neon so much. Uh, here, I'll cut in right here with a bunch of things I've been working on. I've been working on canvases and frames and artwork and furniture using all of the neons because I really wanted to see the colors in their purest form. Like how far will they go? How bright will they get? Well, a theory I have in painting, which again, I'm not alone, uh, but I did I didn't go to art school. I didn't go to, I have not been formally trained in any way whatsoever, which will become imminently clear to you. Uh, but what that does is it gives me a lot of freedom because <laughs> I don't know what all the rules are. I'm still figuring them out. But the way I like to say it is um, uh, my theory of, of sometimes when I'm painting is to kind of have the ugly color that boosts uh, the beautiful color even more. Um, we can get into a lot of memes about that, but we, we won't necessarily go there. But my point is that I think to get the neons to be even more bright, even more amazing is to pair them with kind of a duller color or a richer color, but maybe something a little off off the, the color spectrum that we're playing with. So all of this will become clear as we go, but that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. We're gonna to talk about layering the neons. We're gonna talk about creating a color story with the neons. I'm gonna teach you how to paint uh, beginning to end this piece right here. And I wanna show you the way I work with colors to get the most out of any brand of color that I use. And I use a lot. So full disclaimer, I use the neons, which are amazing by Daydream Apothecary, of course, created by Anissa. I also use Debbie's Design Diary DIY Paint, which is another paint I love to use in conjunction because they behave the same way with water. They both um, reconstitute with water, which allows me to get them 
to have this interplay that's just really awesome. And I also use Miss Lillian's No Wax Chalk Paint. I use that paint because it does not require top coat. It's what you see is what you get. It does not reconstitute with water, but it comes in a variety of colors that really, again, help me boost all these other colors together. So are you guys ready to get started with me? I'm so excited to have you here. Okay, what we're gonna do first is this piece was donated to me. It's pretty bad, isn't it? And I've already cleaned it once. I mean, ba-bam. It was in somebody's basement. It's probably from the 60s or 70s. No, here's, it's ugly, it's bad, it's dirty, and yes, it smells. But here's what it has. It's solid wood, and it's got dovetail joints, and it's got all the hardware, okay? And it's got a lot of fun detail, which we're basically gonna ignore on this project, but it's nice to know that it's there. Um, I have a whole video on my YouTube channel about selecting the right pieces to paint. Sometimes the pretty pieces don't judge a book by its cover, you guys, right? Sometimes the pretty pieces might look good, but they're not gonna last and they're not worth your time. Don't waste your time on them because they're gonna fall apart as pretty as they are. Just because it's on the side of the road doesn't mean you should make it yours. This, although it's ugly and it's smelly and it stinks, is actually gonna be a really great piece of furniture, okay? Because it's got the solid wood construction, it is solid as heck. It is, um, it just needs a really deep clean and maybe a shellacking. So we're gonna do the cleaning and I'm not gonna do the shellacking probably until later because that's boring and we don't need to make a video about that. But in the essence of teaching you, um, if you do have something, this just has an old smell to it, just kind of old wood um, and old kind of musty. It's not cigarette, it's not cat urine, it's not any of those terrible things you might find. It's just been in the basement. So. A trick for that is to clean it and then use um, shellac, a clear shellac over the whole thing. And that will get you started off on the right foot as far as just getting rid of the smell and also prepping it. So what I wanna show you here, I'm gonna have to flip the camera around, is that this also has a lot of divots and uh, places that we need to fix, okay? So I am gonna show you that. But the first thing we're gonna do, and I'm gonna time lapse it because we don't need to show boring stuff when there's too much cool stuff, is I need to clean it, okay? To clean it, this is my handy, you'll see me doing this a lot. Hello, hello. <laughs> and falling over, I am, this, don't worry, they're, 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 um, they're built in as uh, skorts, so don't worry. You're not seeing my underwear. So, but I, these are comfortable and easy to work in. Usually if I don't fall over. Um, I get so many comments like, Sue, you showed your underwear again. I'm like, I did not. I showed, I showed my biker shorts underneath. I didn't show my underwear again like last time. Okay, simple green. Y'all, this is, this is the bomb. This is what I use on everything. Um, if there is a high slick factor, I will, use for, I will use First Step Prep, which is a Miss Lillian's product, which is a deglosser. Um, I use that sparingly because it is so strong, but for just basic cleaning, I'm gonna use this, and I'm gonna use a little scrubby sponge. I buy these in bulk and sell them off my website. Um, you can get them yourself, you can get them from me, or you can buy them in bulk too, if you're in the biz. But it's the red version of these. You can get the green version or the red version. I like the red version because it doesn't scratch my piece, but it really gets in there. It really gets in there and gets a lot of the grime off. So here, let me flip the camera around and show you what I'm doing. All right, so here, see how kind of build up that is? So if you, and I have a bucket of water too, so I'll just take this, dunk it in the water and really get it. But these get this so clean and really gets off any, any of the grime. So we're gonna get up in there and get as much as we can off that's reasonable. We're gonna put a top coat on this, so I'm not gonna worry too much about everything, but I wanna show you that cleaning with this, and I don't clean, it does a good job, and I don't clean every single thing I do like this, but this one was mighty filth, mighty filth. So honestly, simple green and one of these scrubby sponges 
does almost everything I need to get a piece completely prepped and ready. And if the drawers are really gunky, I may also paint those. It just depends. Like it depends, you know, you gotta decide how much your piece is gonna be worth is how much time you're gonna put into it too. You kinda gotta back time that in. So y'all will see when I do these videos for you, I can ramble on, but I try to give you as many little hints, tips and tricks that I can while I speak, because that's what I love to do, teach you guys how to do this and teach you what I've learned. So you'll see here, somebody, somebody put like, I don't know, a frying pan, I don't know, was this in their kitchen? Whatever it is, all of this crinkled up right here. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna take care of that. But before we worry about that, we wanna get as much of this grime off as possible. There we go. Isn't that kind of fun? I mean, isn't it kind of soothing and therapeutic in a way? I don't know. I was deep cleaning a rug yesterday and I swear it was the height of my week. How sad is that? It just felt so good to get that. Like when you dump the water and it's like crazy muddy and you're like, yeah, I got that out of my rug. But then you think, except I've been lying on that rug. <laughs> I've been doing yoga on that rug. I've been face to face with that rug. No, no. All right, was that fun? Was that fun watching me watch this whole thing? Yeah, okay. So now what I wanna do is talk about color. So we're obviously talking about neons today. And these two are the ones I wanna play with because they, they're fiery, they're fiery to me. And I love it, and I love it. So we're gonna be working with these two colors, uh, Mom's Night Out and La La Love Ya, okay? But how to get them to like really pop? Not just pop, pop, but like pop, 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 okay? So this, this is my thinking here. Let me set you down. I'm not used to doing longer form video that's not live. So <laughs> y'all are gonna have to bear with me. Um, I'm used to cutting all this out. I'm used to like doing this and then cutting it all out to be like a 10 minute video. So I'm leaving it all in. So I don't know, y'all have to tell me what you think. Um, how do we get these to pop? What did I talk about earlier? Kind of a, um, a, a darker or, I'm, I'm not even gonna say uglier, but kind of off, off that spectrum. So here's what I thought about. This is Cherry Picked um, by Debbie's Design Diary. Most of you are familiar with this color. But I thought to myself, for me, I don't, I don't love this color as is. I, I said it, I said it, I said it, I said it. I just don't, it's a, it's a little bit dark for me. Um, it, it's in the dark red burgundy, which is just not my happy place generally. But this color makes other colors explode. It makes purple explode. It makes the blues explode. And so for that reason, I love it. I also love to mix it with a little bit of white um, to get all those kind of cherry tones that are in this because it's highly pigmented. But I thought to myself, Okay, what about using this to get these to pop even more? Okay, bear with me. All right, so then I thought, did y'all hear the grays out? Did y'all hear the news that gray is out? I don't know what the next color is, but as far as everybody painting every single thing in their house gray, it's out, which is such a thrill to me until they replace it with beige or they replace it with a crew or, or some other non-existent color. That's just, that's just my own prejudice. But um, gray's out, but we're still gonna use a little bit today, but we're gonna use it with a little bit of purple. So we're gonna use uh, French millinery and then we're gonna use a pink kissing booth. I want you guys to see kind of what's happening. Oh, by the way, uh, I use all the crayons in the crayon box as a kid. I don't think that would, should come as any surprise to you. I'm, we're gonna bring all these colors together uh, and then we'll pull back what we don't need, but we're gonna start with everything. And so we're also gonna add in a little bit. This is um, Kiss Kiss by Miss Lillian's. This does not behave the same way as these colors, so we'll use it sparingly. But I think that, are you guys starting to get where I'm going with this? So, we're gonna, we're gonna use some grays, we're gonna use some deep tones that are gonna help these tones pop. 
Um, this is another color. I don't know if we're going to use it because it's already kind of a combination of all these. I'm not sure if we're going to need that. I feel like you're not seeing that color well enough. There we go. How's that? All right. Uh, that's pomegranate. And then I was thinking, I don't know if we're going to bring in blues or not. I really don't know if we're going to bring in blues, but I've grabbed a couple that I'm thinking about. Um, now, instead of the four boys blue of the neon, I still want the, I want all these colors to be more muted. Okay. Even the French millinery is a purple gray, but it's more muted. So I don't want to compete. I want, I don't want a competing blue. So I'm playing around with ocean depths and OC mist as, as pulling it down. Um, for those of you who've worked with me or you've been on lives with me, you'll know we're just gonna go. I don't, I don't map this out. I don't have a plan in my head. I don't know. I can kind of, if I squint really hard and I think about it, I might have some idea of where it's going. I often do not seek inspiration um, through other people's works who paint furniture necessarily. Instead, I will go toward art pages or things I've seen in a gallery. I'm not comparing myself to an artist in a gallery. Don't don't even get that wrong. I just mean that I, I seek the inspiration um, from, from places where I am inspired by different art techniques and I like to try them out and I rarely do the same thing more than once. So what I like to do when I'm playing around is do a little bit of a color story board. That's about all the planning that I'll do. I'll, I want to try out the different colors together on a small scale so that I don't get halfway through my piece and realize, yeah, that, yeah, that didn't work at all. So this is my color board. So I'd already kind of started playing with these as soon as I got the neon. So this is just, uh, I don't know. I, I can't tell if they're clouds or they're waves or whatever, but you can see I've got the neon pinks going on. I actually have, I actually have Sundance in my color story. So let's bring over Sundance. I'm not sure if we're gonna use Sundance or not, but you can see the neons and then weighted down with these deeper tones. See how they go, bam, I, I just love it. I love it. So we'll see. Um, what am I holding? I'm holding Swamp Mud. Again, this video is not, here to promote other products. I understand that, but I do want to give you a thorough um, uh, beginning to end of everything that I do, if it helps you, okay? Uh, there's a lot of divots in this. There's a lot of weird flakiness in this. Let's get this straight. I am not sanding this thing down. That is not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen in a million years. That's not gonna happen. I see these guys on TikTok, oh my goodness. Let's just sand it down. Is that how you want to spend your day? Sanding like probably crazy chemicals into your face. Why? Why? I don't get it. And then, oh, this is what kills me. All right, this is a long video, so I get to rant. Um, they strip it. They take all this time. They put on the citrus strip. They do all this thing. And I'm thinking, okay, if you're going to bring back the natural wood, I wouldn't on this because this was never designed to be natural wood. It was manufactured this way, but on an old oak dresser or something. And then they strip the wood and I see it. And I'm like, all right, I can get down with this. If that's, if you're going to charge a thousand dollars for that piece or more, and you got down to the wood and you're going to stay, you're not staining it. You're not staining it. You're painting it. You're painting it white. I, I want to jump off a bridge. They just did all that work to get back to the natural wood. And then they go, and then I'm going to prime it. You think I'm lying? Message me and I'll tag you in that TikTok video. I swear, I saved it. I saved it just for a fury outlet whenever I needed one. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to sand it out smooth. I'm not going to sand the whole thing out. What I am going to do is put on a product that's going to level it for me. So I am gonna talk about this. I'm using Swamp Mud. This is how I do it. This is how we do it. I only know the first word to any song and I don't even know the tune very well. Um, just so we're clear. This is what we're gonna do. I'm opening it up. I haven't even used this. I love a fresh can of paint before it's all caked and gross. Yeah, my assistant's like, if she could just teach me to put the lids on right, um, she would be so happy, but then she wouldn't have a job. Now, would she? If I did everything right and put everything away, I would have so much time that I wouldn't need an assistant. So, Jonna, just be grateful 
but I am ADHD sloppy. Okay, so I'm gonna get this off. Oh my gosh, this could take up our whole 30 minutes just getting this off, no. All right, I've shooken it, shaken it, shaky, shaky. And I'm, I'm gonna flip the camera because I'm just pouring this on. All right, now I wanna shake it one more time. So basically what this is, I won't go too long about it, but it's a really thick, thick, thick paint that has basically um, whatever mud, mud in it that's gonna self level and fill in the cracks and crevices on this. So I just wanna show you that and stop you from um, sanding and, and breathing and things unnecessarily. Okay, watch. And I, I don't know what this is about. I honestly don't, but I'm gonna take this swamp mud I'm gonna pour it right on top. Are you supposed to pour it? No. Do I follow the rules? I think we've made that clear. And then I'm just gonna roll it out. It needs some mold. Like I don't need to put this into a pan and load up my brush. I can load up my brush on my piece. Okay. And this might take a couple coats to get that, but that's okay. That's all right. And I like using a roller because it adds another little texture. We're not gonna try to camouflage by having it stay completely smooth. We're kind of camouflaging, we're camouflaging with a thick paint, okay? Where else is this happening? It's happening over here. Let's get that. Now that my brush is pretty loaded, so I'm just going over it pretty thick. It, the color match is just accidental. I, I sell this in gray and brown and white. Now, I'm gonna go over the whole top because I don't want a fluctuation in my undertone. I know, we already talked about underwear, but this is the undertone. So I am gonna take this, I'm gonna spread it all out. I just went thicker over that area. So I just like to use this product sparingly but because it's, it's more expensive than paint, so I'm not gonna like necessarily do my whole piece in it, but it does act as a fantastic primer. Um, and so I want you guys to know about it. But I only use it when I really, really need something like this. Um, for those of you who use Dixie Belle products, is it like slick stick? Um, kinda, sorta, not really. Um, that's more for pure adhesion, whereas this is not about adhesion as much as it is leveling out areas that are gouged. But yes, but it still will act as an adhesive layer. I hope that answers all the questions that you have not asked me today. All right, so we're just gonna get that on. And then I'm gonna check and see if there's any other places around this piece that need a little leveling out. And then we'll come back and I'll show you that. And then we'll get started on the painting part. See, it already looks so much better. Now I'm not gonna use this on the front because I don't need to. There's not a lot of divots in there. Uh, we're gonna start when we get back uh, with ground control. Okay, see you in a flash. All right, kiddos, we're back. We're back. I had a little lunch break, letting things dry. Do I have anything in my teeth? A little bit. That's all right. It'll work its way out. So next step, <clears throat> normally I would just start painting because I just like to get right down to it. But here's the thing. I want these neons to pop to their full maximum pop potential, okay? In order to do that, I'm going to start with ground control. Okay, I don't usually prime, I don't usually put white underneath. The only times I do are if I am painting something, uh, a light color over dark wood, and I really need to like shift the color wheel all the way over to the brighter tones, or if I'm painting something like red. Yes, red and orange are hard. And since we are doing some oranges and I really do wanna pop, so ground control. When you get this in the mail, um, it will not have drips all the way down the side and will not be totally gunked up on the top. You will get a fresh can, but for the purposes of reality television, this is how I roll. So I'm gonna start actually with a smaller brush for now. Um, 
use whatever brush you love. I use brushes that I sell. I use brushes that are donated. I use brushes I find at yard sales. I use, I use it all. I personally prefer uh, acrylic because they don't shed as much. And I understand that Daydream Apothecary now has acrylic brushes, which I will be getting my hands on as soon as I can. But first, let's just go in and I'm gonna put ground control all over. I'm not worrying about getting completely full coverage. Um, I just want to take this cream up to white. We've already cleaned it. And basically we cleaned it and sanded it at the same time. So I'm not worried about adhesion. I also don't worry about adhesion as much when I'm working with clay-based paints. Um, if I was working with just Miss Lillian's or any other kind of latex paint that I may have chalked or whatever, I might worry about it a little bit more. But the beauty of these chalk paints is just how incredible they are at needing the least amount of prep. Notice I said the least amount. I don't buy into the no prep, the no prep thing. No, because I do too much custom work for people and I can't risk that. And I know that everything needs some form of prep going on. Even if it's not a full on sand down, I just really wanna get in there and give it at least a good cleaning and a very light sanding, all right? I'm leaving the hardware on, yes I am, yes I am. Haters be warned, I'm leaving the hardware on because I want the hardware to disappear, all right? I'm not gonna go back and spray it black. I'm not gonna spend hours cleaning it and getting it back to its former brassiness. I want it to disappear into the painting, so to speak. That's my way of doing it. Sometimes I take these off if my client wants to do something else with them or I use specialty waxes and do all kinds of fun stuff with them, but for the sake of this, no. I'm also leaving the drawers in, mostly because we're doing this video. Um, but I will go back and just hit the tops and the sides. Um, I'm also leaving these in because, hold on, I had to concentrate there for a second. Um, I want the design to flow, so make sure your drawers are all in the right place. Um, uh, you can tape down your side, but all I do is flick this. All right here, you don't need to see this. Hold on one second. Okay, so I don't tape this down. If you've only got this little lip, just take your brush and just kind of hit the side of it like that. If you kind of go this way, you're going to get some paint on there. So just kick it and go all the way across the top. We're back and it's still the same day. It's not even a trick of my outfit or my jewelry. You can tell by the beads of sweat because although it's mid it's not even mid-September. It's almost late September. It is still so freaking humid here. Up oh, and here comes the train. I'll try to talk over it. Anyway, to recap, we have prepped this piece. We have cleaned this piece. We have put filler in places where it was all chippy and weird. And we have put on uh, ground control to give it that pop, 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 okay? So, now is the most fun part of any, any, any project um, because what we do now doesn't matter. Let me rephrase that. It totally matters, but it requires absolutely no level of perfection or skill or thought. It's where you get to go completely into your flow because what we're doing now is called the underlayer. I know the first video we talked about my underwear. This is the under layer <laughs> that I like to put under every priest that I'm doing where I'm painting with either, um, well, basically with any kind of paint that can be reconstituted, such as the Neons by Anissa by Daydream Apothecary. So 
I also do this technique when I'm using DIY paints and those are the only two paints that I've ever found that can do this. And so they play really nice together. So what I wanna do right now is show you how I'm gonna put this on. So we talked in the last video about the colors that we're gonna use and we're gonna kind of feature the La La Love Ya and the Mom's Not Out. What did I say, the Mom's Not Out? <laughs> My Southern is coming out because I'm so bloody hot. Um, what I don't know is if I want these two to pop underneath the colors I'm gonna put on top of them or if I want them to blend in on top of the colors. Since I don't know, I'm gonna do both. It's a method to my madness, sometimes. Okay, so I've got my paints here. I've got my handy dandy chair here, you guys. So I've got all my paints. And we're just gonna start putting this on and we're gonna see how it looks and we're gonna be kind of random and just have some fun. And this is where we can try out different paint strokes. We can try out different brushes we can try out if are we going to do the tanglewood sue smush and mush this one for those of you who do know me are we going to go side to side and up and down and side to side and up and down are we going to splatter it i mean y'all could do that are you going to go linearly across very smoothly back and forth i know i know that's a thing i don't do that thing i don't have patience for that thing but um no matter what we're gonna have fun so make sure everything's all stirred up was doing this on a live the other day with the cap on. Anyway, let's just start putting some here. And I know um, a lot of people do these horizontally. If y'all hadn't caught on yet, I don't follow the rules and I prefer vertical video. And that way I can use video across the board and show you all different kinds of things. I'm not gonna put it up there because I did just finish painting that. So we got La La Love You right here. I have to make sure. La la love ya. All right, let's just, isn't this exciting? Y'all are like, just put it on, Sue. Yeah, okay. Ah, okay, right? Right? Now, here's what I can tell you already. Here's what I can tell you. These paints, you can go on thick, um, or you can go on thin. I want to get full coverage in one coat. I, do, I don't want to have the white showing through. So I'm going to try to go a little thicker. See if I can get a little bit more coverage. Because I don't want to have to do two coats of this. See what I mean? Now, I have a trick for that, but I'm not sure I'm going to use it yet. Um, here's another thing I don't do. I don't follow the lines of the dressers. They're, irre they're irrelevant. Basically, this is a three-dimensional uh, rectangular um, canvas. I just, I ignore all this. We're not paying any attention to that at all. It's, it's a little bit of a bumpy ride. Okay, I brought you in a little bit closer and I, I, just, I just jumped in one little bit. This paint can go on thick or thin and it goes on really beautifully even for a chalk paint, which is really nice that it has the ability to kind of go on like a glaze and then you can keep building it up to get the pure color. But if you want to do kind of one stroke and basically get that pop as hard as you want it, I have a little trick for you, one that I'm using. So again, this is something I use. It's called Texture Magic. It's by Miss Lillian's No Wax Chalk Paint. And I put it in here. When I am ready for more, I'll show you what I did. I just put a little in here and then put my paint in here and it thickened it up. It thickened it up pretty fast because I want to do a lot of layers, but you guys, I'm also, I also sell the furniture. So sometimes if I'm going to do lots and lots of layers on a piece, like I see these people and they like, they just do like one layer or two later and they're done. And I'm like, that's awesome. But when I'm doing these, I, I put in a lot, a lot of layers. So do you see that? I've made it really thick. Now, um, I have not tried it, but what people do with DIY paint sometimes is freeze it to thicken it up. You can leave it outside. You can put a little bit in a bowl to thicken it up. I don't know, do, do what you wanna do or not, but do you see that now? Do you see that now? Come in closer, can you see that? So now I'm getting it like full on, like 
thick, really thick. All right, so let's keep going and we're just gonna get this pink down randomly. I'm gonna dip right into my next color. I'm gonna dip right in and put that on. And I love the way these are kind of very similar. This has definitely more orange and La La Love You definitely has more blue, but I'm just gonna dip my brush in. I know, I'm contaminating, but I wanna see how it blends as well. Yeah. So basically, I just wing it. I'm gonna use a little bit of the powder. You don't need much. So I'm guessing that's like around a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons. Do not come for me if you are someone who needs things measured. It, it won't, it, we won't get along, I'm sorry. We'll get along, I'll be nice to you. You gotta be nice to me too, cause I don't do it. Anyway, we're gonna get that in there. And that, do you see how that, that just clumped it right up and I'm doing this with holding the camera. So I'm gonna have to put in a bit more. There we go, but I can't hold this steady. Wait, hold on, I got it. Pure entertainment value, and you get to see my fading pedicure. There we go. Now it's like an amazing paste, all right? I know, I take everything and I tear it apart, and I don't have a camera person here. So you know what, my feet, are my anchor, they're my tripod. We make do around here. There we go. Now look at that. Don't worry about it being a little bit clumpy because when it goes on, it's gonna be fine. So let's wipe that off. This is why I normally do really short videos that show only the good stuff. <laughs> anyway, let's go on. Oh my gosh, are you seeing that? So that is perfectly thick. I'm just gonna wait for this to dry, finish the top and the sides, and then we're gonna have our base done. Like, like that, my dear, like that. We are still in day one. Day one, not lying. Okay, I'll meet you back. Hello kiddos, it's Tango with Sue. We're back again. We can tell it's a new day. I'm not sweaty. I have new clothes on. It's just, everything's bright and cheery. So especially, ba-bam, this piece, seriously bright and cheery. So uh, we are back after we've done all the painting. It looks a little lighter than reality right now. I wish I looked lighter than reality. I digress because I've given it a little bit of a sand. I just took either a light sanding sponge or the Scotch Bright sander that I showed you before. I never have everything right here. Hold up. This is it. The one we spoke of in the last video. And I just went over to kind of smooth everything out. Because we used the thickener in places, we definitely have a lot of texture. It's kind of like if you've ever used salt wash. Um, but it filled in all the little cracks and crevices. But here's what I wanna tell you. I'm not going for a smooth finish to begin with. So I'm going for texture and different layers and different things coming through, kind of old world. So for that reason, I'll show you up close here. We have some texture going on, but it also helped to camouflage some of the issues that we were dealing with on top. So here, check this out. All right, here, we can look with the light kind of bouncing off of it there. See how we've got some texture there? But remember how that looked all burnt? Well, now it all kind of blends in. So we've got some texture going all over. I personally would just rather have kind of some texture like this than something that's chipped off and looks wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. So what do we need for the next step? We need all the paints that we used already. La La Love Ya and Mom's Night Out. Plus we are going to add Sundance in. Oh, I'm a little blown out. Let's, let's. Turn, turn it down a little suit, turn it down a notch. There we go, that's a little better. I remember when people first started doing lives and they would blow out the lights so much so that they looked younger, but really they looked like aliens. It was funny. Those of y'all who remember Periscope days, 
I just aged myself, I know. Um, so we're gonna, these are the colors, and then we're gonna add in Kissing Booth by Debbie's Design Diary. We're gonna add in Cherry Picked by Debbie's Design Diary, and honest to goodness, why can't I have everything here at the same time? French Millinery by Debbie's Design Diary. Spritzer bottle, spray bottle, Mr. Bottle, important to have. Do we wanna start right here on the front? That's very fun, but here's what I like to do. I'm gonna turn her around a little bit. This is why. I feel like when you're painting, you kinda of gotta hit your groove. You kinda of gotta like pick up steam. And if you start on the front, you might figure out the look you're going for and perfect it by the time you get to the bottom right corner. Um, since this is probably the piece that's gonna show the most, let's start on the side. Let's figure out our blend. Let's get, let's, let's get in flow. Let's get in rhythm and then we'll bring it around to the side. Sound good? Let's go. Um, I do need to be honest with you that I cheated on you. I did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I started doing the side with the colors that we chose. And I was filming it and I was, I was pretty hilarious. I think that was like probably my best work that I've now deleted <laughs> because the colors were not working. They were not working here. I'm gonna, I think I have it on a time lapse. I'll show you here. Um, I started using the, the deeper tones that I talked about, the cherry picked, um, and then the, the French millinery, kind of a light gray purple. And oh my God, it was just too much. It was too dark. It was too dark, so I tried to lighten it up. You can see it here. Anyway, I've changed color schemes a little bit. This happens. This is why it's hard to do these tutorials on these pieces that you've never done before because sometimes we gotta, we gotta shift gears. So I've shifted gears. Here we are. I'm really happy with this right now. Um, so what I ended up doing is going more toward deep blues and then lifting up into some of the purples and the pinks. So here, let me see if you can see this a little bit better. Let me get you in a little bit more, a little bit more. All right, so this is a mixture of DIY paints and Daydream Apothecary. Okay, and you're probably like, Sue, where did the... Where did the neon go? Well, just wait, here's a trick that I like to do so I can kind of see the blend. And like I said, it's very subtle and we're gonna pull it back more when we're all done, but that background was just something to pull out underneath. But I want you to see this, see how that's coming in a lot more prominently, backwards camera. So what I like to do is just get a mister. You don't wanna use a spray bottle because the spray bottle is going to leave drips and we don't want drips. We just want to see what this is going to look like when we put our top coat on. It won't be quite this dark, but can y'all see that now? Let me flip it around for you. There we go. All right. So now you can kind of see, you can also see where I've got a brush stroke in there. All right. I'll get, there we go. Get that out of there. Get that out of there. I see I can kind of still mush it around a little bit. Now you can kind of see where I've got these pops coming through. It's very celestial. It's very celestial. So, and then I'm using kind of that bohemian blue. And then I ended up using hot damn violet over here. So now you can kind of see a little bit more of where we're going. So let's move to the front and you'll start to see this all come together, but I'm pretty happy with it. And I just love, I don't know, I, I love how it's interpretive. I'm not really trying to do an ocean. I'm not really trying to do a sunset. I'm not really trying to do the mountains. I'm not really trying to do a sky, but somewhere in there, your brain likes to connect things sometimes and it's fun just to see what happens. All right, let's give it a go. Fair warning, it's about, it's about to get crazy in here. These are the brushes of choice today. I want you to use every brush you've ever had. Go to your neighbor's house, go to a yard sale, buy some brushes from me, buy some brushes from Daydream Apothecary. I have such an assortment of brushes. Why? Because this is what all my brushes look like after um, I use them a couple times. I smush, I mush, I get into the corners and the crevices. Y'all just have to try what works for you. Honestly, just 
try a million different brushes and see which one when it's in your hand like takes on a life of its own so i've changed the color scheme ever so slightly so slightly um because sometimes you got to go with it and see if it works and then sometimes it doesn't work okay uh but we are still going to be using a little bit of uh hot damn violet we've already used a lot um of ground control but we're going to mix this with our other paints to get some highlights and low lights we're going to use mom's night out these are getting low i'm gonna have to break into more stash and definitely we're going to be using some la la love ya now in conjunction with that i'm adding in from diy paint i'm adding in kissing booth and i'm adding in very little cherry picked i opened the whole thing but i'm really going to use very little of it um but the ones i am going to use are bohemian blue okay and mermaid tail i know but i swear by these things these things have been in there forever and we're still going to use a little bit of the french millinery and i think yes okay the train is coming and there's airplanes overhead and it sounds like I am in the middle of a war zone. So that means we're, it's time to start. It's time to start, you guys. So I'm going to push you back a little bit. Let's see here. Am I, am I going to push you away? Am I going to push you away? I'm going to push you away a little bit so you can see. That is the downside of the fact that we're not um, doing landscape. But trust me, it's easier for me to bring you in here and see. So what I'm thinking I want to do to get started, if you were hoping for a tutorial, well, it's like, this is how you do it. This is how you always do it. This is step one, two, three, and four. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. This is, you have to get inside my brain a little bit and, and, um, it could be scary. It could be scary in there, but we're going to be all right. I know that I want the base of this to be kind of that deep pink. Okay. And then down here, I know I want to have like the bohemian blues leading into that. So we're going to start there. All right. So let's, let's just start there. We're going to start getting some of this pink on. And if you want to, if you want to make sure your paint moves around, this has been dry a couple days, we can kind of wet it down a little bit just so we have some, some action, some movement, some movement in the paint. All right, here we go. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. I'm freaking out a little bit now. I'm not, it's fine. I'm used to this. I'm used to this, but it is amazing how dark this color is. If this, if this shows you anything, look how dark this color is. Um, you think the, uh, you think Debbie's Design Diary paints are really, they are really rich in color, but you don't realize how deep in tone they are. So what I'm doing now is I'm just dipping into, dipping into one, really getting it in there. This is my favorite brush, okay? And then trying to figure out which, which tones I want. So I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit in places and darker in places. And then we're gonna pull back some of the neons underneath. And do you see how I'm getting full coverage right now? I mean, not in the places where I'm kind of deliberately skipping, but do you see that based on having that base layer of our neons, we're really getting like solid coverage. That's what's super cool. So we've already done a base layer, but it didn't have to be the exact colors. I'm gonna spray these with a little water and I'm spraying this just to keep my paint working and my brush. Cause this stuff can dry out pretty fast. We can reconstitute it, but that way I can move around a little bit more. Get into all these little nooks and crannies. So all I'm doing right now, really you guys, is just dipping in, spreading it around, adding some low lights and some highlights kind of randomly. We'll step back and we'll take a better look at this. All right, y'all wanna watch me do the whole thing? Y'all wanna watch? Here we go. <laughs> Is it coming together for you? Are you starting to see it? Is it starting to come to life? 
I know, we've got a ways to go. So the next thing I wanna show you, basically right now I've just kind of mapped out some of the colors, kind of where I want them. I'm gonna stand back, I'm gonna fix the balance, I might make some lighter, make some darker. We're gonna do a whole nice blend, but I'm just making sure I actually like the colors that are happening here. And for the most part I do, some I don't, but I know you're wondering like, Sue, what about, what about all that work you did to get that first coat on? So here's what I wanna show you. Here's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna grab this because I already killed my knees once before doing this. I literally have been in physical therapy for the last year because of doing this, sitting down on the ground without a knee pad, that's dumb. All right, so here's the Bohemian Blue, right? You can see a little bit of either the Mom's Night Out or the La La Love You coming through. I'm going to kind of wet this down a little bit. And we're going to start doing a little bit more blending. I know I jumped right into an advanced course here, you guys. I should have started with something, you know, here, let's paint this dresser one color. So here I keep my rags right here. I just don't do that very well. So I've got my rag and I'm going to start. I've spritzed it with a little water. And I'm gonna start kind of just pulling some of those edges out. That's, see what I mean? Kind of along the hardware there. That might be more than I wanted. You can go light, you can go heavy. But basically at this point, I wanna keep bringing those undertones back in. I don't want them to be gone forever. And that, my friends, is the beauty of this paint. There's only these two brands of paints will allow you to do this, to kind of get that, to bring that back. You might want it a little less, you might want it a little more. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll literally just hold it up and pull it off, I won't even rub it, okay? Smack it. Sometimes I'll use a roller but basically what I wanna do right now is just before this completely hardens and dries, I wanna kind of smush it around, blend these colors, and still pick up some of those colors underneath. All right? I'm, I'm getting pretty happy with that blend. <laughs> this was not what I was going for, but you guys, if you've learned anything from me, it's just go with what happens. Start with your inspiration. Start with what you think you were gonna do, but be willing to change. Be willing to change course. And I kind of changed course a bit in here. I wanted to just do about five colors, kind of blending in, a little bit simple. Yeah, no, that didn't work. But what we have to do now is we have to finish the top and the sides. So I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna do it fast, and then we're gonna top coat this baby, and we're gonna be done. So, um, what I like here is how we have the deep tones and the purples, and then we kind of get a little splash of the pink, and then right at the tippy top, right at the tippy top, we have Mom's Night Out kind of making an appearance. So what I'm thinking is we carry that on to the top of the piece. Are you with me? All right, let's flip around so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so we still have the side left to do, and we still have the top. I'm gonna go ahead and do the top because I feel like that's a more prominent feature than the sides will be, depending of course on where it's placed in whoever has this amazing piece in their home, where it will be. Maybe it'll be in a dining room where you walk in and see this. Who knows where this is gonna end up? Might even end up in my house. Um, so, but I definitely feel like I wanna go to the top now. So this is the, this is the order of operations for me. I practice on one side, I get it the way I want it, I do the front, and then I'm gonna go right here to the top. Luckily, we've already primed this, you guys, with Mom's Night Out. So I'm pretty sure that what I wanna do is just carry this around and just do, just let it be, let it be wild. Let it be wild on the top. It's gonna to kinda of come up. Um, I don't think I wanna do a solid coat of that. I think I'll mix, I think I'll go back to where we started. I think I'm gonna mix Mom's Night Out um, and La La Love Ya and whatever else comes to me. I'm gonna time lapse this for you so you can see because I don't even know what I'm gonna do. But 
it's gonna be awesome. And I think what we'll do on the top is just stick to the neons. Here we go. Last thing I like to do before putting on the top coat is do the sides. Because if you do the side and then you do the front and it doesn't match, yeah, that's a problem. So already I know I wanna pull the blue around and I kinda just wanna have the story continue a little bit. So I'm just gonna do this super fast for you. And the, the fun thing about this part is that, I don't know about you guys, but when you already got it and you already love it, and then all you have to do is carry it around the sides. Now is the second most fun to where you didn't know where you're going at all. Like when you don't know where you're going at all, it's fun. You just splatter the paint on. And when you totally know where you're going and you're just touching it up, that's the second most fun. Um, and then everything in the middle is a little bit stressful. <laughs> Welcome to furniture painting. Yay. All right, here we go. check to see how we were doing with our inspiration. I think we're doing all right. It's definitely an homage. So I did the top in pure neons and here's where I'm thinking. I want to tone it down slightly, kind of like where, let me see if I could point right there, where it's a little bit lighter. So here's what I did. I put a little bit of ground control right on top and I spritzed it with water and I'm just using it like a glaze, just dry brushing out this watered down ground control. I'm gonna get it so you can't even see the delineation. Might need to do a couple coats. Just gonna kind of blend that out a little bit. Just right here in this spot. I felt like it was like, we're going from here. We're kind of getting up to need on it. And then it was like, Bam! It was it was a little jarring. Sorry, I just have a lot of emotions on what color does. For those of you who don't know me, I anthropomorphize all the colors. So they all have personalities. A lot of them have names that have nothing to do with the paint names. Um, but it was a little bit too much. So now I feel like, yes, now it's a gradual, kind of milky, and then we get into the crazy time. All right, so I'm gonna keep blending out that. Meet me back and we're gonna seal this baby. You guys, we did it. I did it. I mean, for being honest here, but you're gonna do it, right? You're gonna do it. I've shown you almost every step of this entire process. So just to recap, we put on a base layer of ground control so this thing would pop. Then I put on a layer of the neons that I knew I wanted to kind of pop through in different areas, which they have, which they have. I pulled them out. So they're kind of like, if you're thinking like an oil painting or really any kind of painting, they're the under layer that we kind of bounced everything off of. And I left, I left it all around all of the handles and such to add a little, a little drama. Uh, Cause I love uh, and then we just blended. We blended with abandon. That's what we did. We had some fun. We um, played with colors. We, we looked to see what things would do. And we practiced with different color schemes. Using the neons with the Debbie's Design Diary paints for me is a really great combination of using darker tones to really boost the neons, but also make it so that this can fit into anybody's house, anybody's decor. Uh, this can go anywhere now. So we still have one final step. The trick with these paints is that they're not done till you're done, okay? At this point in time, if I had the time and inclination, I could spray this down with water and scrape the whole thing off. There is no reason I would do that. <laughs> but we do want to protect the piece. So you've got a couple of options. You've got many options, actually. You can use a water-based acrylic sealer. Uh, 
there's so many of them out there. Choose your favorite. I personally, when working with clay and chalk-based paints, like to use wax. Uh, so I'm gonna use uh, my Debbie's Design Diary Wax because this is the wax I have. This is the wax I sell. This is in clear. And I have already tested it and I know that this works really well with all clay-based paints. All paints, really. But now, I don't want you to get scared. When I put this on here, it's going to get dark. And y'all might be like, oh my God, Sue, you just ruined it. Patience. Okay, this is always the issue with clay-based paints because they are so porous, because they're made with clay and with chalk. When you put this on, it gets really dark really fast and it can be a little scary, but it will lighten back up, not to how light it is right here, but trust me, you're gonna love it. So come in close. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Y'all know the way, okay? Go right in here. There we go. All right, so you don't need that much. Okay, I'm using just, I, I, I've had this brush for so long, I don't even remember who made it. But, oh, let's not pull that down. It's so, it's so old, it's rusty. Uh, flat bristle, and you definitely want something that you can kind of dig in. Um, I have used floppy brushes, and I end up getting kind of an uneven coverage when I do that, uh, because in some places it really soaks in, and in some places it doesn't. One last thing I forgot to tell you, I did check my blend first by spritzing the whole thing with water and then looking at it darker to make sure I liked my blend, okay? That's it, I know, sometimes I have to cheat on you because um, there's lots to do, lots to fit in. But, all right, so I'm just putting a little bit on my brush, not too much. Let me go right there where I'm actually on camera. Come on, Sue, you got this. Ready, ready, ready? And just rub it in. A little bit darker, but it will dry, okay? It will dry. There we go. I wanna get in all these nooks and crannies. The only other thing I did off camera was I definitely cleaned up all my edges. Um, mostly because I wanna make sure that the drawers could open and close easily. And I did leave the hardware on the whole time. Now this might be a little tricky getting in there. Some people might not do that, but you can see why I did, right? You can see that it's I, it's kind of integral to the piece. I wanted the hardware to disappear. So I couldn't go and paint it after the fact. Um, some people might have preferred to take off all the hardware and then paint it gold or paint it black, but I don't know. I don't know what I have against hardware, but I often paint right over it. It's just, it gets in the way of my canvas. That's the way I see it. It's my canvas. So it's just it's just a protrusion of my canvas, if I'm being perfectly honest. So, all right, that's it. You can already see it's starting to lighten up a little bit. But I'm going to put this on the whole thing. I'm going to get a serious arm workout. That is for sure. I'll show you guys as I do it. And then what I want you to do is just let it dry. Okay? An hour, a couple hours. It, you know, it doesn't have to be a week. And then we're going to buff it. And a lot of people forget that step. Now, do you have to buff wax? No, you don't. You can leave it matte. But if you want it to get hard and smooth and easily cleanable and easily dustable, you put your wax on, you get it in, you may even put on another coat, and then and then you buff it. And it's just like, it's like baby butt smooth. It's just, it's glorious. That's why I love waxing more than anything else because I don't have to worry about brush strokes. I don't have to worry about drips. Um, and I get a, you know, a workout. Yeah, that, hold on, let me hold that up. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's recap, shall we? I'm Tango with Sue, welcome back. All right, so this was the inspiration. This was just a little dream board I did of colors that I wanted to try putting together. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say we kind of nailed that. 
we kind of nailed that. Not as much white, but overall really good. Now, this was our inspiration for the blend. You'll see that. Um, I would say I went a little off book here, but you guys, it was so exciting. There were so many colors that just kept coming whenever I would blend two of these colors together and get another color. I couldn't stick with five colors, but I would say we're still style adjacent, wouldn't you? So basically, the only other thing I wanna tell you as far as what happened off camera is that the, we waxed it and waited for it to dry. And what I learned, and this is important, so I hope you stayed to the very end of this video, is that the only difference between the Debbie's Design Diary paints and the Neon Daydream Apothecary paints is that the, the DIY paints stay a little bit darker. Even after they've been waxed, they do lighten back up and the Daydream lightens back up, but it lightens back up like, like that much more. So as far as your blend goes, you gotta take that into account. I just, I just smoothed it over with a little bit of colored wax. That will have to be another video. <laughs> because we're done with this one. But it wasn't a big deal. But since my video is about blending other colors with the neons, I want full disclosure there. So you guys, I hope you've had a fantastic journey with me. I've had so much fun. I am Tanglewood Sue. I love color. I love teaching. I love twirling in my chair during my lives just so people can get excited to see if I'm gonna fall down again. Um, it's, just, it's just part of the game. You can find me here on Facebook or YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or my website, or you can come see me in person, you guys. I'm in Maryland on the DC border. Um, my shop is called Tanglewood Works and I'm Tanglewood Sue. And it's been a pleasure teaching you how to blend colors today and have some fun and paint your furniture. So just go out and have a bright and fantastic colorful day, you guys. All right, take care. Mwah. Bye.